In this video I'll be planning the layout of my new workshop. If you don't already know about my new workshop, I'd recommend checking out one of my previous videos. I'll link to that in the description box below. I used a piece of software called SketchUp to do the drawings to help me lay out the space, which you'll see featured throughout this video. The space I have to work with is 6.2 by 5.8 meters internally. It has two small windows along the back wall and a large window and a door on the wall on the left hand side. And it has an inspection pit in the ground. And I'm still thinking about how to use the space down there, but at the moment I'm thinking it will probably just be storage space for things that I don't use very often. So this is how the space looks at the moment, and before I decide where I want to put anything, there are some works that I need to do in order to better soundproof the space for the purposes of shooting videos. First, I'm going to be adding an insulated ceiling to the roof joists, and I'll also create a bit of a loft space, but I'm not going to bother showing that on this drawing because at the moment I'm more concerned with the wall space and the floor space. But next, I'll be adding battens, insulation, and cladding to the walls in between the pillars, mainly so that it's easier and more flexible to mount things onto the wall. And I do need to show that because that's going to take up a bit of floor space. And thirdly, I'm going to be building a partition wall in front of the garage door with a set of double PVC French doors, which I picked up second hand. These have an opening of just over one meter in width, which should be plenty big enough to take anything that I make in and out of the workshop. And I'm doing all of this work mainly to isolate sound, like I said, but it's also going to have another purpose. It's going to create some space for timber storage. So I'm going to make lots of brackets, which will get secured to the wall studs and it'll look a little something like this. This timber storage will be accessible via the motorized electric door at the front of the workshop. On one side, I can store boards up to about 1.6 meters in length and on the other side, about three meters. Now that all of that is shown, I can start thinking about where I want things to be placed. And one of my top priorities is to get all of my machines located as closely as possible to my dust extractor, because that's going to make the dust collection as effective as it can be, and that's important to me. I've decided that my extractor and cyclone are going to live in this corner. I'm going to be using the same extractor that I used in my previous workshop, but I can't reuse my previous cyclone because the dust box got broken during our move. So I've bought a new dust box, which is one of these plastic barrels with an airtight lid, and also a new cyclone too, as I found a secondhand dust commander on eBay locally to me. And this one is made of metal, so it's nice and robust. You can find links to the barrel and the dust commander in the description box below. Right next to the extractor, I'm going to make a new mitre station along the wall on the right hand side. I'm going to make the worktops either side about 1200 millimeters in length because I want a decent cutting length capacity at the mitre saw. And I also want to store some machines underneath the mitre station and I'll talk about that more shortly. For the mitre station, I'm toying with the idea of not having a fence and just using the mitre saw fence instead. Similar to what David Pacciuto did, I'll link to that video in the description box below in case you haven't seen it. But I do want a ruler and stop block system so that I can set up for repeatable cuts quickly and easily. I've got some ideas about how I might do that, but more on that in a future video. Underneath the mitre station, I'm hoping to be able to accommodate two of my machines. In a similar way to how John Heiss stores his planer under his mitre station, I'll link to his video about that in the description box too. I'd like my Electra Beckham planer thicknesser on one side and my new belt and disc sander on the other. This machine came courtesy of Machine Mart in the UK. Link to their website in the description box below too. And I'll be talking more about this machine in a future video. It replaces my previous record power machine, which now has a faulty switch. That machine's now being repaired by one of my mates at the moment, and then I'm going to be getting rid of it because I never really liked it anyway. And also I wanted a larger machine. I want both of those machines to be on mobile bases so that it's quick and easy to pull them out and start working. And I want those mobile bases to hold all of the accessories associated with those machines like spare blades and the fence for the jointer, sanding belts for the sander, that sort of stuff. I was considering having doors on these cabinets to stop the dust getting in and settling on the machines, but having drawn it up, I've decided that might not be such a good idea because I think it'll make them kind of awkward to get to. So maybe I'll put up some kind of dust shroud at the top or something. I'm not sure yet. In order to keep the machines below the mitre station at a good working height, my mitre saw station is going to need to be unusually tall, but I don't have a problem with that. 
Much like how I had the bandsaw set up at my old workshop, I'm actually happy to have the tables of both of those tools quite high up, as I think it makes it easier to see what and where you're cutting. On top of the miter station, I'll have my Clark bench grinder sander, which will be mounted to the worktop, and also my Clark pillar drill. These machines will need to sit far enough back that they don't interfere with whatever I'm cutting against the miter saw fence, which means I might need to make the miter station a bit deeper, but I'll figure all of that stuff out later down the line. I also have space for more smallish machines here if I ever need it. Beneath the miter saw, I'll probably just have some drawers, probably one or two sets of the drawer units that I already have from my old workshop. And to the right of the miter station, I'll probably use that area for storing sheet materials, plywood, OSB, MDF, and all of that stuff. Maybe I'll build some kind of cabinet for it in future, but initially it'll probably just lean against the wall. So that's most of my larger machines, all accommodated along one wall close to the dust extractor, which allows me to connect them all up with relatively short hose runs. In the centre of the shop is going to be my table saw and workbench. Initially, this will be exactly the same setup as I had in my previous workshop, but in the longer run, I will definitely be making a new table saw stand, but I'm not going to start that yet because I'm still considering upgrading to a different table saw with a quieter motor. I've looked at the Milwaukee saw, which Matt at Badger Workshop really likes, but it's a bit too much money for me at the moment. I don't really want to get a cabinet saw because the options I've looked at don't quite tick all of the boxes for me. Eventually I will probably replace the workbench too, but for the time being it will be fine. It's good and solid, so it's not a priority. The table saw stand is on wheels, so if I need to cut something particularly long, I can move it around. But in the new workshop, I will have plenty of in-feed and out-feed space, so it'll probably stay where it is most of the time. The workbench is not on wheels, so that will stay in one place. The table saw will need dust extraction and power, and I'm not sure how I'm going to get power to it yet because I have a concrete floor, so I don't really want to go through the hassle of putting power there. I have considered installing a raised floor, but for the time being, I don't think I'm going to be able to do that because of A, the amount of work involved, and B, the costs, which I'm already stretching my budget with all of the battens, cladding, and insulation that I've bought for the ceiling and walls. I'll probably keep my air compressor underneath the table saw. The bandsaw, I think, is going to go over here. It's a bit of a long pipe run to the extractor, but to be honest, I very rarely use extraction at the bandsaw anyway. I tend to just use the passive dust collection box in the saw itself. Next is something I've always wanted, a large assembly table. I always craved more worktop space at the old workshop, especially when working on larger projects, so I'm excited about having this. The top is going to be a full eight by four foot sheet of ply and it'll probably have a simple table frame with shelves underneath for storage and wheels on the bottom of the legs so that I can move it around and push it out of the way when needed. Next, storage. Above the mitre station, I'm going to mount the metal cabinets that were left behind in the workshop before I moved in. I've already cleaned them up and given them a few coats of spray paint. They are going to hold all of my hand-operated cordless tools, which are mostly Hikoki and Makita tools, drills, routers, sanders, jigsaws, that kind of stuff. Then there's a metal filing cabinet that will probably sit over here somewhere, and a metal shelving unit, which I think is going to be ideal to store pieces of wood and metal that are about 800 millimeters or shorter in length. And I brought my sanding cabinet with me, which was a project featured on my channel, so that will get mounted onto one of the walls too. The wall next to my workbench is going to be my main tool wall, which will have all of the tools that I reach for frequently mounted to it in a similar way to how I had it in the previous workshop because that worked really well. And while we're talking about storage space, I am planning on building a loft, as I mentioned earlier, which will be accessible by ladder. I'll just need to move the assembly table out of the way in order to get up there. It's not going to span the full length and width of the workshop, it'll just be above the central area and I'll cover all of that work in a future video too. If in future I get a lathe or another large tool, I'm quite confident I'll be able to find space for it because I still have a couple of walls that have plenty of space against them. Like any workspace, this will evolve as time moves on. There'll be lots of things that I want to change and make more efficient later on, but for now, as a starting point, I think this layout is going to work pretty well for the work that I do. If anyone has any suggestions or ideas though, please let me know in the comments. 
I'm always happy to hear them. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. You can also sign up to my Patreon if you'd like to support the channel where you can receive early access to my videos, some exclusive content, free plans and cut lists, and a name credit at the end of my videos. Thank you for watching.